Hey folks, what is going on? This is episode 659 of the First and Free Rate Show. I am Via Ballo. Over here, we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. I'm about to talk a little bit of Georgia Southern today. We're going to talk about the secondary because I know a lot of people was worried about the secondary when it comes to uh, us going up against the Citadel because they didn't pass much. But I'm going to tell you guys right now, Georgia Southern secondary will be tested. And I'm going to give you the reasons why. I'm going to let you know what UAB done against North Carolina a and and I kind of give you guys somewhat of a, a sense of what to look for when this game will be played on Thursday, well, Thursday, on Saturday. So uh, get get ready. Hopefully you guys will understand where I'm coming from and uh, hope you take this information and just keep it on the bulletin board when we play against these guys on Saturday. So if this is your first time here, welcome. I can be found on YouTube and Rumble. I am also on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. And I'm also on X at VF Baller, and the website is firstandframerates.com. Not going to try to keep you guys long this go around. I mean, I think this is a pretty straightforward episode, and uh, just want to let you guys know that this game could be a shootout. The more I think about it, the more I look at it, this game could be a legit shootout because Georgia Southern beat um, the Citadel 34 to nothing, and we threw the ball in the air. We actually had a balance of running as well, so uh, I think that's one thing we do have over UAB. Because UAB didn't run the ball that much uh, against uh, uh, against uh, North Carolina a and uh, I think they had four guys that run the ball, and um, really one of them was the running back, and one of them was the quarterback. And they basically, you know, collectively ran for almost like maybe 125 yards, uh, maybe a little bit or more than that. But you got to understand, uh, Jalen White had what, 120 by himself or something like that. So, I mean, we're, we're going to be able to have a little bit of an advantage if we do run the ball from what I see. Um, if you look at uh, what North Carolina a t did against them, they didn't run the ball very well. Or they didn't do much very well, So, but they didn't throw the ball much either. Kind of similar to what the Citadel did against us. But um, one thing that does stand out with UAB, they threw the ball very, very well. 38 of 41, 291, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Jacob Zeno looked really good against North Carolina AT. Not to take nothing away from those guys um, for North Carolina AT, but they are North Carolina AT. As far as Georgia Southern goes, we have a much better secondary, in my opinion. You got Jalen Denton, you have uh, TJ Smith, you got Williams, you also have um, Hickman, uh, you got Mark Stampley. You got some guys back there that can get at the ball if need be. Some excellent excellent um uh, cornerbacks that will test uh uab now why i think this game will be a shootout because to be honest i i have a lot of faith in georgia southern secondary but i don't know what they're going to look like i know these guys are talented i know what they can do but they haven't been tested yet so i haven't seen it uh so this could be a situation where this could be a, a 28 31 game or 31 35 game if we're not careful one thing that we can do if we don't want to be uh, in a shootout, it's slow the game down with OJ Arnold and Jalen White. Uh, I want to see those guys uh, pretty much set the tempo because if not, this could be a shootout with UAB. And with us being in Paulson, I, I feel like we have a big advantage with us having a secondary and the talent that we have. I think we have a, a huge advantage. I think this is not going, I don't think this is going to be the same game as last year where their running backs basically. Uh, ran over our defense i think our defensive front is much better at tackling than it was last year i think last year we had a very big problem with tackling strength and conditioning was an issue i talked to some people on the inside and i talked to some people who usually go to the games for the most part you they was looking and like you can tell a lot of these players just was not um especially the year before you could tell the year before last year, you could tell like a lot of guys was not really on the strength and conditioning side of things. And a lot of people got hurt. You know, we got a lot of kids that got hurt later on in the year. I don't think that's going to be the issue this year because um, not just the injury side of things, but when you're beefed up, you have more weight on you. You have a much more um, girth under your body. You're going to be able to take some players down. And we saw that with the way that um, Georgia Southern went after the players up from the Citadel. Now, we need to do a little bit better with uh, containing the spread option, which I don't think that UAB is running. They're basically running the same type of offense we're running. And with Trent Dilfer, Trent Dilfer is their coach, you know they're going to try to throw the ball more. So, like I said, this could be a situation if we're not able to stop the pass, 
you already know how Georgia Southern does. We have a plethora of of, of receivers where we can throw the ball around too. This could be a high scoring game. Um, like I said, at the end of the day, even though the secondary will be tested, it all can negate if we can keep the ball out of UAB hands and just run the ball effectively. And we got what maybe three to four running backs that literally can run the ball very very well. So uh, I expect uh, Coach Ellis and company to try that. I expect them to try to keep the ball away from their quarterback I, just to keep a situation where like Jacob Zeno threw for, you know, almost 90%, you know what I'm saying? You got to say 38 or 41 is like, that's ridiculous to, to have any type of completion percentage. Um, Even though with 41 attempts, you only threw for 291, that's not a really good ratio, but still, you know, complete and only having three incompletions is absolutely insane. So, that just shows you how efficient they're going to try to be in the short passing game because a lot of their players, you know, they they had four catches for 30-something yards, two catches for 28 yards. They, they, they really didn't have to throw, like, they, it looked like they didn't really try to throw too deep to anybody over uh, on the field. So it was like a lot of consistent, concise, and effective passing that really um that really beat up on Carolina A&T. With that being said, that does give us a chance to keep things in front of us. If they're going to try that again, that does give a chance to keep things in front of us. And with the instincts that some of our players have, we should have opportunities to get in front of the ball and take get a couple takeaways. So um, I, I think this is going to be a very interesting game for the for the secondary. I mean, last week we, we kind of saw what this team is about when it's stopping the run because we couldn't stop the run for anything. But now this week is going to be the flip side of that, where we're going to basically see what these guys can do in a secondary. So it's a pretty good test prior to going to Wisconsin and uh, possibly and prior to going to Ball State, playing those two games on the road before we come back home to Coastal Carolina. So um, this is a, a pretty much a payback game. This is a get back game. I feel like with us dropping the ball in um, in, in in Birmingham last year. You got to understand, we were down by seven in the fourth quarter. We could have won this game. And um, I, I think our defense, for the most part, let us down. I think there's going to be a different story this go around. I think this team is a lot more efficient. They're a lot more physical. They're, they're, they're not afraid to get after the quarterback. This defense looks hungry. They look like they're ready to make some things happen. They want to create some turnovers to give the ball back to the offense. And the offense just look like how they've been looking for the past year and a half now. I mean, you know, the offense with Coach Clay Helton, the, we're, we're really looking good now as far as throwing the ball, being efficient, you know, taking care of business, getting into the end zone, and really that's all you can ask for. We take care of business, make sure nothing gets behind us on defense, and like I said, the secondary will be tested, but I don't think it's going to be enough. I think Georgia Southern will pull away in this game and will win. I will be having a uh, a pregame show throughout the game, um, throughout uh, before – the game starts on Saturday. Give my final thoughts and opinions. But knowing me, covering Georgia Southern, you already know that I am uh, extremely biased and I feel like Georgia Southern's going to win the game. So we're going to see how that plays out. Secondary, you've been put on notice. If you looked at the, if you've been looking at any film, you've been looking at the numbers that Jacob Zeno put up. If you've seen whatever, uh, what UAB has done to AT, you've been put on notice. And I'm pretty sure these guys are going to be ready to go. And there's no doubt in my mind. And you look at how well TJ Smith and Demel Hickman and, and Mark Stampley and all these other guys have been stepping up. I'm pretty sure those guys are going to be definitely ready to go to uh, take it to UAB and Paulson. So if you like this commentary, hit the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think Georgia Southern Secondary is, is, is going to uh, take it to the UAB because UAB is efficient in passing the ball? It's going to be like a totally different situation where it comes to the uh, Citadel game. And don't get it twisted. These guys, at UAB may try to run the ball again against us because of what happened last year, but I think our front seven is going to be more prepared and ready to go. So that's the way I feel about it. I could be found on YouTube and Rumble, also on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. I am on X at VF Baller, and the website is firstandframerates.com. I want to thank you guys for the support. You guys have been absolutely amazing, and I can't thank you guys enough. I'm going to get up out of here. I'm going to slide and uh, watch a little bit of football. I think the Chiefs and the Lions are playing. So I'm going to watch a little bit of that, and I'll be back with the next episode on the close out the week. All right, y'all. You guys take it easy, and y'all be blessed.
Peace.